introducing eh, Ronald Bautista. <laughs> eh, he is the digital marketing strategist at Grupo Parada. And Grupo Parada, as you re recall in my presentation, uh, is one of our head partners. Actually, they are the one who manage our website, our, uh, our social accounts, and they help us maximize our visibility in uh, in the in the internet. Uh, and he helped us with very uh, uh, innovative. Uh, uh, st strategies in order to uh, enhance and promote our services. Uh, he was he will be talking about how you can marketing yourself online, and throughout his career in New York City, Ronald has followed his purpose to work for a stronger community, and he has strengthened strengthened campaigns for New York State Department of State. A, a, a New York City major election candidacy, Equatori Ecuadorian consulate in New York City, also because actually he's, a, you were raised, yeah, from Ecuador, a, although he's already a New Yorker. <laughs> and then uh, the Woodruff Wilson National Fellowship Foundation, among others, and of course, uh, he worked with heads as well. So uh, he's going to be our final uh, presenter. Please uh, take advantage of all his expertise on this area. Go ahead. Thank you, Elkis. Uh, good afternoon. Well, actually, it's still morning. Good morning, everyone. So what we're going to do is that, uh, you know, since this is the last presentation, I want to also uh, get some energy going. So I want everybody to stand up for a second. All right, so bear with me. Put your hands up and stretch up. Now put your hands on your hips. Now I want you to take your right hand and introduce yourself to the person next to you. All right, no need to go all around the table, but it's good to you know get to know everybody. Okay, we did already some networking today. And uh, this, so the purpose of this right now is, uh, you know, at the end, uh, you know, school plays an important role uh, in, in our careers, in our lives, but it's, it's very important to also never to forget that there are other things out there. I mean, yes, there's internships, but there's also people. So it's not just about taking classes to gain some experience, but also you develop your experience from the people that you meet and also from people meeting you and getting to know who you are. And it connects directly to the topic of today, which is improving your professional digital footprint. I've just developed um, the title of the presentation a bit more than uh, marketing yourself online. And what your digital footprint is, is what do people find when they look you up and they also, <laughs> And, the, and, and also so that um, you, you're able to present what it, I'm sorry, you, everybody can sit down now. <laughs> it's good because that means you're excited and everybody's still sin, standing up. Uh, <laughs> so let me tell you a bit about myself. I, uh, I was born in Ecuador. Um, I came to, the, to Hoboken, New Jersey at age 15. Well, actually, at age 13, so it was 15 years ago. And uh, I've been living always there. I, I, I've, I've always been, you know, wanting to become involved with my community. So uh, one day I went online, I went on Google, and I uh, started searching for, I'm a big Google fan, and I started searching for uh, community-based organizations that were Ecuadorian that were in the area. And I'm telling you, this was about 2003, maybe? So it was a long time ago. And uh, this organization, this Ecuadorian organization, uh, you know, surprised me. I, I, I was able to find it. I found out uh, who was in the organization, what they were working on, uh, what projects, uh, and, and also what results they, have, they had achieved. And so I became so, uh, you know, motivated by all this content, all this information that they had, and all the, everything that they had accomplished that I decided, ah, yeah, I want to I wanna get involved. So I sent out an email, found out when the, uh, when the first meeting was going to take place. 
I went, I attended. Funny thing is that, uh, you know, I became so involved that I became the executive director of that organization eventually. Uh, we were able to develop different programs, uh, a scholarship fund. Uh, I was actually able to continue it and maximize it because he had already been in place for one year when I came in. And uh, also a funny story, anecdote, was that that's how I met uh, who I'm working with at Grupo Parada right now. Because he was actually the person that uh, answered that email when I, when I uh, reached out to this organization. So this comes to show you that when you look to become more involved with your community and uh, look for different opportunities to gain experience and really find out, figure out what you want to do, you not only do that, but you also make the connections to make that happen uh, along the way when you already decide what career you want to do. So from that, I, I, we have worked with uh, the Office for New Americans uh, for the New York State Department of State, uh, with Emblem Health, with a uh, Cassian Network. And uh, you know, it's, it has to do a lot with digital media. What we do a lot of work with is about you know, helping these institutions get Hispanics on board. And we use digital media to, to do it because of all the reasons that we have just found out today of the use of technology to improve our lives, find out more information. And uh, this is just some numbers on, uh, on you know, what recruiters are looking for when they're looking for, uh, for in, in within the workforce. Uh, they, they review your profile online. Uh, they want to check out your professional experience, um, you know, like industry-related posts. They want to know what you're all about. So 73% of recruiters have hired a candidate through social media. So that means, and I, and I, and I hear you guys, many people I've, I've spoken to uh, have told me, yeah, listen, you know, I don't, how many people here have Facebook, actually? Raise your hands. Okay, how many people have um, Twitter? How many people have LinkedIn? Okay, so some people say, I don't, you know, I don't want my name out there. I don't want to. Uh, I want to keep it private. Listen, somebody's going to be speaking about you at some point. It's better if it's yourself. So, uh, so, that, so you, it's better if you're positioning the narrative of how do you want to be perceived uh, out there as a professional, as a person. So. Being public is not, is, it, the internet was created so that it, it's, a, it's about access. So why not take advantage of that? Why not become more visible? And you know, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, uh, there's a blog. We just, we heard today from Google that co content is king. So you have to start generating, not just thinking about they're gonna look for me because they're gonna look for Ronald Bautista. They're gonna be looking for uh, digital marketing strategies. They're gonna be looking for a digital uh, outreach strategist. So you, you're going to have to start creating uh, this, this footprint of, of information, of content, of things that you, are, uh, that, that you believe on, that you have learned, that you have accomplished. Uh, so this is all part of your visibility, not just as, a, as, as an individual, but as a professional. So these are the different tactics that um, you know, recruiters use when, when it comes to uh, social networks. So they, they use it for, to search for candidates, uh, contact them, uh, you know, generate employee referrals, uh, post jobs. Uh, so there's different opportunities within social media when it comes to uh, you know, landing a, a position and, and really uh, you know, becoming more involved and finding out you know, about you. So that's why it's important, and we have Google Plus, which is also important because of the positioning it has when, when you Google yourself uh, online. So by the raise of hands, who has Google themselves? How many of you actually found yourselves? OK. So, so there's different uh, you know, uh, challenges to doing that, because uh, when, when, you, when you have a very common name, uh, it might be tough to really position yourself and be found as easily. So I have, I have found out that my name is very popular in the Philippines. Uh, I've been, I, uh, Ronald Bautista is a very popular name uh, to the point that I've gotten, uh, I, I have, I created, and we're going to go over this, I created a, a Facebook uh, professional page, uh, not a friend page. And uh, I keep getting tagged on pictures uh, with people from the Philippines, and I'm like, ah, that's not me, you know? Uh, so it's pretty interesting how, 
how, you know, that's why it's not only about positioning your name, it's about positioning your name and what you know. Uh, but there's also a, a, an issue, and who knows about GoDaddy.com? Raise your hand. Okay, so GoDaddy.com, it it's one of the sites that helps you uh, get a domain name, which is the name of your website, www.ronaldbautista.com, for example. So I bought it because I was like, you know, I gotta watch out for my image, I, gotta, I, want, I want somebody to, when they look me up, they're gonna find me. Uh, and it's even more important for politicians and a funny fact is, who knows who Ted Cruz is? So, so Ted Cruz is running for president. Uh, he's a Republican. And uh, as you may uh, know or not know, uh, he does not like uh, President Obama as much. And he does not support immigration reform. But uh, what he did, his one big mistake that he did was that he bought his domain tedcruz.org. Now, when you think of a website, who thinks of .com? And who thinks of .org? Not many. So somebody else bought TechCruise.com and decided they were going to be putting what they wanted to put, which is totally against to what he really wants to be showcasing, which is support President Obama, immigration reform now. Uh, so this just comes to see, show that you have to uh, really look through all these different um, media and how do you protect yourself, but also how do you present what you want to be presenting. And you start with your purpose. How many of you, by the raise of hands, have a business card? OK, so that's something that we have to work on. And the business card, uh, what it does is that it introduces yourself, which comes back to our activity earlier on today. We wanted to see, OK, so we are introducing ourselves. There's a way that we want to be perceived. Start thinking about what your purpose is. You know, what, what are you looking to be known for? Uh, you know, and what, what's, what skills? Uh, so then you start working towards that, but you also uh, know how to be, uh, you, you put that purpose together, and from there, that's where you start generating your content online, on social media, on, uh, you know, making videos, uh, you know, posting conferences, uh, you know, the way that you make your business card as well. So, so that's very important when you, it always starts with your purpose. We spoke earlier about uh, a mantra. A mantra is, uh, you know, three or four words that describe what your purpose is. It actually feeds from the mission statement, you know. So uh, everybody knows uh, what a mission statement is, right? So, so a mission statement is very long, and it's hard to uh, really memorize. So that's when a mantra really comes in handy, because, uh, you know, people are able to grasp it like that. So it's like, so if you say what your, per what your mantra is, then people are like, okay, I know, I know what that person's all about. I know when they, they introduce themselves, and, they, and then I see what he's doing online that t completely matches with what his purpose and his mantra is. So that's something that you really have to work on as well. This is something that uh, I think applies not only for uh, healthcare facilities, but also it applies to us as individuals. So this is something, this, these are um, uh, numbers on, on how people uh, choose uh, a, a facility, a, a hospital facility. And they start looking about the reputation of the facility. Uh, they start looking if somebody, if a physician recommended it, which means it's a professional contact, and then you have does it use the latest technology, meaning is it innovative? And also, is it recommended by friends and family? And it comes down to the same thing. You know, we are, uh, we, we want, when you're gonna hire somebody, you wanna know what the reputation of that person is. You wanna know if another professional is recommending him. So that's what we're gonna be seeing today. And also, um, who are their friends and family? What, uh, do they have the support to? What's the word of mouth around that as well? So you start building your digital footprint. And when you build your digital footprint, you have to think of consistency. You start with the website, and you say, OK, so does the domain name, is it taken? Uh, and also, then you start working your way through Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, the different platforms so that you can tell, OK, so what user can I, can I have that is consistent that when, when somebody's gonna mention me on, on Twitter, they can mention me the same way on, on Instagram. So you have to make it easier for people to be able to reach you, to contact you, to know how to, how to find you. So this is the Facebook page that I, I, uh, I developed. So what I did was that I had 
a friend page, just like everybody else. And I decided, I was like, well, there's a lot of benefits to creating a like page because it has a lot more reach. And, and also you can, you can check, it, it helps you with the visibility online when they look you up and uh, you know, all these different tools uh, to really strengthen your image, your footprint online. So what I did was that I took my friend page and I flipped it, I, made, I turned it, I converted it into um, a like page, a fan page. And all the friends that I had turned into likes. So that strengthens, you, you know, when somebody looks you up online, they're gonna say, oh, you know, this person has a following, he's an influencer, and then he's talking about X, Y, and Z. Now the picture on top is because I'm very passionate about uh, urban policy and, and community, strength, and strengthening the community. So this is a, that's a picture of my nephew, actually. Uh, my nephew, Gabriel, uh, he, uh, he was born in Venezuela. My brother uh, used to live there uh, for many years. And, and what, so, that picture was when they closed the, the street. And, and you know, I just love that picture that he just took his skateboard and just went in the middle of the street and without a war in the world. And to me, that's really the expression of what freedom really is. And that could be taken into you know, the views that you have uh, in your profession, in your life, and everything. So I really, I'm, I really feel strong about, uh, about that picture. And that's why I have it as a cover photo. And, and so this is, this is very important because uh, what I did was I, I created a friend, another friend uh, profile afterwards so I could manage the, the, the Facebook page, but also so that I can keep, keep it very personal. And then that's when it comes in about the privacy, et cetera. So this is what people find, find if they have the link but they're not on, uh, logged in onto Facebook. It's very well hidden. Of course, it's not, it's not like they cannot find me at all, but uh, I put it in a privacy level so only friends of my friends can uh, add me and can see my content. And therefore, uh, I'm able to control that personal side a lot more. And I can keep the personal and professional side whether and whatever I choose, and I want people to uh, think of me on the, uh, on the professional page. And these are the different benefits. You can see uh, what the level of engagement has been, what the level of, uh, of reach, who, how many people have seen it. And, and it's, it's amazing that what, what you're able to, um, what you get in the face-to-face -face interactions. There's people that are gonna be saying, oh yeah, I saw that you spoke at this place, or I saw that you were talking about X, Y, and C. So, you, so it's really great because uh, you know, it, whatever you do offline, if you reflect it online, even the people that were not at the place with you are able to be engaged and able to know what you went through, what you did, uh, what you have accomplished. Now we have Twitter and the importance of hashtags. We have the heads events hashtag. Now there's a, there's a strategy that I use when I go to conferences that helps me increase my number of followers, but also in, it helps me uh, increase uh, or improve my, my networking within an event. So how many of you have, by the race of hands, have done a tweet today uh, with Heads events? Okay, so, so what I do in events is that I take notes through Twitter. So whenever I, I, whatever I'm listening to and there's something that I find interesting or something that I want to kind of add my personal views about that topic, I tweet about it with the hashtag. So then the people that are, going, that are around the conference or around the, the, the event uh, also see it, also interact, and then uh, it, it has happened to me a ton of times. You, you, you're, uh, you're on a break or something, and somebody approaches you and say, oh, you, you, you tweeted about X, Y, and Z. And they're like, yeah, and then you start developing a conversation. Uh, so, it, so then again, it's about, you know, yes, your presence online, and, but it's also about what interactions you can develop offline as well. Uh, this also helps you come back to it later, and then you can you know, start creating, developing a post. Uh, you can go on Blogger and then start posting your, uh, your input, your, your key uh, takeaways from the presentation based on what you already did. So it's a way to uh, not to really save time, and you're able to publish uh, things online 
and social media, while at the end also getting the best uh, out of that, of that conference. And these are just some different hashtags that are very, uh, very important to follow and very important to interact with uh, when you develop different type of content. Now we're going to, into LinkedIn. So uh, you, you have the results. So what you want to do is that you want to start uh, when, how many, you, so you have to put uh, the title of what, you, of what you do first, because that's gonna be the first thing that they read. Uh, yes, it's important that you're the president or vice president, or, or if you have a, a specific title in the company, but some people are looking for what is it that, that you're specialized in. Uh, so that, that could be first, and then you follow through with the rest. And when you go into somebody's profile, in your profile, uh, what I suggest is that you put up uh, the, um, the skills that you have, and you see those little pictures that are right next to you, is, is uh, uh, next to the skills, are uh, people that are saying, yes, this person is an expert on this. So they are supporting, they're, they're, um, they're building your reputation, they're recommending you. And that goes back to what we were speaking about before. How do people really select or choose a healthcare institution or a professional, which is how to make people make decisions? Recommendations, word of mouth. So this is uh, something that is important that should be up there. Then you have the summary. You have the ability on LinkedIn to start uh, posting pictures, but pictures that are attached to uh, a case study that you have done, uh, a paper that you have done, uh, maybe a video. You maybe you were in a video that uh, was developed by you know you you spoke at a conference, you spoke at a in the classroom, and and, and it's on YouTube. Uh, different clients, uh, you know, your experience, you can really uh, put it in there so that, you know, people know more about uh, what, you, what your work is. And you can develop also on your projects. And you can start linking people that you have worked on those projects with. So you start feeding off the, the, um, the contacts that they have as well. And, and that really maximizes uh, your reach. So when we go through all the things that, that uh, has to do with building your digital footprint, we have to start thinking about your mantra. We really have to start thinking about what your purpose is, how do you want to be perceived. Uh, then you have to think about becoming more visible and take control of your footprint. So it's about, you know, people are going to be looking for you, but they're going to be looking for things that you're doing, but then people are also looking for to learn. So how many people here have a YouTube channel? Okay, so how many people have a Gmail? Okay, so if you have a Gmail, you can create a YouTube channel, and maybe you don't post anything, but you're able to, uh, but you should. Uh, why? Because people are searching for tutorials, people are searching for, uh, for you know, more information regarding a specific topic, and you can really position yourself as an expert in, 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 in a matter. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's about, it's about um, start experiencing it, uh, give it a shot, develop content uh, that is relevant to what you want to do as a professional, and, and, and you'll, be, you'll be able to develop that, that, that a strong uh, footprint and, you know, build your reputation, really uh, maximize that word of mouth on the projects that you're working on, keep consistency about the name and about the content. So if you're doing your professional page, start writing about, yes, you can include personal stuff because you are a human being. And they want to know, as, as, uh, as Leo was, uh, from Google was mentioning earlier, he said, well, in, in Google, it's, it's completely different from before. It's not about uh, you, know, you what, what school you went to and that's it, uh, you know, or what's your experience and that's all. It's about what you have done, what type of person you are. Uh, and, and, and that's how people are really selecting uh, nowadays when they're looking to hire. Uh, there's uh, actually when, so I went to uh, Hudson County Community College in, uh, in, in Jersey. Uh, I went to NGCU, which is a state school. And something that I found out was, and I, and I, I think that's, that's a very relevant point, is that it comes to a point that when, you, when you're doing something great, people don't even ask what school specifically you went to. So it's about not just your knowledge and about, your, about the school that you went to and the name of the school that you went to. It's about what you do with it. 
And it comes to a point, like I said, uh, in, my, in, in, the whole, in, in my bio, it doesn't, say, doesn't have to say what, what did I study, where did I study. That, those are the tools many times you need in order to get your foot on the door. But uh, what you can showcase and what you can demonstrate, that's a lot, that's a lot you know, very powerful and what you can, and what you can uh, do in order to get where you want to get to. So generate context through hashtags. Don't forget to take notes with, with your Twitter. That really helps uh, develop your, and get your name out there. And uh, how many people here heard about the ALS uh, cha Ice Bucket Challenge? Raise your hand. How many people did it? All right, so we have some. Uh, so don't worry, I'm not going to challenge you to uh, throw a bucket of ice over your heads. Uh, but I wanted to share something with you. Uh, so I've, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of walks uh, with, uh, for ALS uh, in the past five years, six years. Uh, my dad passed away because of, of ALS, and I thought it was a very innovative idea. Uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was something great that somebody started doing, which was uh, doing the ice bucket challenge. And, and that's how people, you know, things got, you know, the word got out there and, and people started sharing and people started uh, really uh, donating and pushing forward for this. And this really made it easier for people like me that, you know, always work on, on, on pushing this cause to really, you know, you know get, get better at, 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 at pushing this cause and getting more people to walk every year. So what I want to do is I want to challenge you to, uh, to, to really make, do something great, to start with yourself, to start with uh, building your brand, start building your, your, from your purpose, start really looking into what you want to do and, and working on the content and, and how to position yourselves and, uh, and really find out and figuring out through experience what you really want to do. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, uh, there's a microphone, I think. I'm very happy to hear what you're saying, and it's fantastic. But at the same time, as you are a student and working the jobs, how you could compromise, you know, doing all this stuff and you know working in the media and spend the time on it by doing other stuff outside. It's sometimes it's getting very hard to compromise that. No, I hear you, and thank you for the question. So when I when I started working uh, as a volunteer in in uh, at the Ecuadorian nonprofit that's community based, uh, I was still uh, you know I I encourage everybody to do that. Uh, but then so I was I was still in school. I was paying my way through college, and I dedicated some of my free time to that. Um, if you support yourself with an, an organization that's doing this and they have a social media team, they can be helping you into developing that, that presence online because they can tag you in pictures, they can mention you on Twitter, and, and so you can really rely on, on that. Uh, but also, I mean, there's, ha, you, everybody has a cell phone nowadays. You can, it's very quick to just take a picture and really write what you're thinking about at that moment and submitting it. It's not about being online all the time or, or being on your phone and posting on social media all the time. It's about being very strategic on what you'd be posting and really thinking about uh, something that, that people want to hear, some, something that people are looking for uh, so that you really create an engagement. Sometimes it's not about you know, just uh, what, what we like, it's about what we like and what other people might be interested on. Any other questions? Nope. Yes. Oh, sorry. There's uh, just for a new question. <laughs> um, my question is let me just stand up. Um, how do you balance having basically an internet identity, whether like let's say you're a personal blogger, you tweet and you love fashion and things like that, but you want to switch that over and make a brand. So how can you transition and keep both, but not have to jeopardize like your personal life or have to jeopardize the reputation of your brand? So, so, you, so you mean like uh, if, if, you like, if you like fashion, but you're, what you really want to work on is something else? Is that it, or? More or less, um, like, let's say you like fashion, but you want to be a person that's 
a professional in fashion, how do you balance both? Because you have to have yeah. a professional identity, like you were explaining earlier, but you also, that's your passion, so you will talk about it with less of a filter than on the professional side. So how would you balance both of those things on the internet? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, so, so, you have, so you have your passions, follow your passions. And, and you can really work uh, towards that by, you know, start making it experiential. So you start saying, okay, uh, so I like fashion, but I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to get to that, to that point. So while you're doing your research and really working towards that dream that you have, uh, start documenting it. Start, start, start letting people know what your experience was. You, maybe you say, well, I, you know, from what I researched, you know, I was, uh, you know, I could have done uh, these three steps in order to get to a certain point where I want to be in fashion, for example, and and it didn't work. But I found out that I can do X, Y, and C. You can already be giving a shortcut to somebody else uh, that's going through the same path as you. You develop a following, and also the pe the people that might that, that would be looking at what at your work when they want to hire you and when they want to work with you, they're gonna say, okay, this person really went through thick and thin to make it where they want to go. And, and they know the process. And, and so you're showcasing your experience and that at the end really strengthens your, your, your brand and your, and your image. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, back here. So we're all aware now that you have taught us the benefits of being on social media and putting ourselves out, out there using the information that we want others to see. Um, but many times we also hear a lot of information about how we need to disconnect, we need to be more aware of what's around us, we need to make more personal connections with people and kind of like just put the phone down. So how do you find the balance since you have put energy and work into building your identity online to, to not make it, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you find your balance so it's not too much to the point where you're not connecting with people on, in real life? Yes, no, and, I, and I agree. And, and actually, so something that I was going to suggest was uh, something that happened in, a, in an event. Um, when it's a small event, get off the phone. <laughs> because the, from, from up here, you can see everything. And if you see somebody, and so, but when it's a lot smaller. So one time we were in a, in a meeting, and somebody was taking notes from their phones. And I have a note, so I could take my pen out and kind of already you know, sh show that I'm taking notes. So, um, so the speaker actually called somebody out and said, please get off your phone. This is disrespectful. So, so you know, depends on, the, uh, on where you're at. Uh, if, if you're there to network, then network. Uh, and, and, and I mean, nothing, nothing beats the face-to-face -face interactions. The, the, your digital presence is only a support that you have to your offline interactions. So, um, so what I do, for example, I go on LinkedIn and I see people who, are, uh, who I can potentially work with or that I'm interested in, in learning more about their careers and what they've been working on. So I send them a message, and I don't say, hey, you know, just tell me everything through here. I say, how about we meet for coffee? I always say coffee, even though I don't drink coffee. I, I drink chocolate. Uh, and, then, and then I, you know, I'm, but it sounds more, prof more professional. And then I, you know, I tell them, let's meet up for coffee. When are you free? We can meet up in the city. And then we meet, and then we take that online interaction offline. But in order for them to say yes, they have to look up and they say, okay, so who is this person that is asking me for a coffee? Am I interested? Am I gonna get something out of it? Uh, if, if, if you have a LinkedIn that's you know, practically empty, they might be like, you know, I, I don't really need to uh, meet up with this person. But if they see something that is of interest to them, then they'll take that, that next step to the offline part. Thanks. Uh, yes. Hi, I was just wondering, so I'm not a huge fan of social media for like obvious reasons, um, but what social media network would you recommend the most? I know that LinkedIn is a professional site, but um, I don't know, I guess like where would I go, especially like for me, like I want to study medicine so that I could put myself out there so that I can get internships or some sort of like research program. So. So you mean if I choose one? <laughs> so you mean if I choose one social media? I, see, 
that's a bit tough. I like to compliment, you know, with two things. So let's say LinkedIn is very important because it's professional, and you're focusing, you know, I just want professional. Uh, if they're gonna look up for me, they're gonna find me on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is is a must for what you want to do. But then, where do you generate the content? There's uh, there's also that LinkedIn has the ability to create posts. So you create posts on your LinkedIn, so you're generating content. But then the other one would be uh, would be YouTube. I, I mean, YouTube is, is very powerful because, I mean, if you want to become a doctor and uh, you, you want, so many times uh, media calls for doctors or hospitals that say, hey, listen, we want to do an interview uh, regarding X, Y, and C. And so, and so, you know, if you're not prepared for that, you know, speaking in front of the camera moment, then it becomes difficult. But if you already have a track record, of, you know, and, and I'm saying related to your industry. You know, start, start you know, I don't know, have, have somebody interview you about a topic that you learn in school. Uh, or start, you know, really talking about, uh, you know, something that you experienced when, when you were studying uh, medicine. Then start developing towards that. Uh, really focus on how you want to be known for. Develop that, you, that, those videos from that. And, and then you have a track record of really showcasing and say, when the opportunity comes, you can really get, you know, get that uh, opportunity. Also, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's plenty of, of uh, there's, a, there's a show that, I think it's called Doctors, is it? That they have the doctors, they have a panel, and they're talking about different issues in medicine. So they became uh, well known so because they were on TV. So YouTube actually gives you the, the opportunity to have your own, your own TV channel, your own show. And so you have the same opportunity as them, uh, of course, with all, without all the production crew. But, but, then you, but you have that opportunity to really become well known. And so if by the time you become a doctor and you have your own, let's say you have your own practice, uh, people that are looking for symptoms or, or tips on how to get better and feel better about a certain, uh, uh, you know, thing that they're feeling, uh, they're going to trust the person that they got the information from. So that's how you start really developing your profile. You start developing your, your, uh, your following and maybe even your patients. Thanks. Uh, yes, back there. You know how everybody wants to have their um, pressure, well, personal life, like personal, and then they want the professional side. But most companies nowadays, they want to know everything, especially your personal life. How do you come about that? Because you also have to sign a form and everything like that so they could go through everything. Yeah. Well, so, I, so the first filter, the fir first way to prevent that is don't post anything online that would embarrass you. Because at, at some point, it's going to get out there. Or it's gonna it's gonna be visible to somebody, and you know. So it's it's the same as if if you have uh, let's say if I have issues at home, and then I just go around and start talking about all my issues at home and this and that, and then people are like, oh, this guy always talks about these issues at home. So it's the same thing about in social media. So if you start you know really venting out in social media, uh, you're putting it for everybody to see or everybody that knows you to see, and also I believe that. You know, sometimes recruiters call people that, well, depending on the job that you're going for, they call people that you know, and then if that person, you know, I don't know, you know that even, even people that are close to us can't say, some, can't say the wrong thing. So if, if we're able to prevent, to go through that first filter in, in, in really thinking before posting, then that's, that's a first step. The second step would be something like what I did with separating the, my, my personal one, because I like to post things that are funny, too, but have nothing to do with what I work on. So on Facebook, on my friend page, I post things that are funny, but not offensive. And then, and then I, ha I post, uh, I could post family things on, on my professional one. I could post maybe uh, sometimes a picture about my trips, because you know, it's, you're still keeping a little bit personal, not too, you know, uh, you know, stiff, let's say. So I think that's the best way to go about about really separating the the personal from the professional, but also about you know not being not getting in trouble by what you post on, on online. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, 
first thing, I've never hashtagged. And what would, because in my experience, when I see hashtags, most of them have been among my friends who are not very professional. They use it really excessively, and so it's less of a reason for me to use hashtags. Yeah. But if you were to convince me to start hashtagging, um, especially on a professional level, how should I start and why? Okay, so so hashtags uh, really help you when people want to look for a topic that's related to that. So so many times, so first rule of thumb is don't do it more than three hashtags in one post. So yeah, I, I, I don't like either when I see like 20, 30 different hashtags for every word that they have posted on a, on a, on a post. And that actually doesn't help at all. Um, but it helps you because it, 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 gives, it, it gives your post more traction. So there's, uh, there's, and, and there's different, different types of hashtags. I mean, sometimes I put hashtags within the, the actual sentence that I'm writing. For example, if, if, if I'm writing and then I mention community in, in my post, I do a hashtag on community, or I do a hashtag on politics, or I do a hashtag on marketing. And then people that are searching for those hashtags for information regarding that, they start, they start getting, you know, start looking into those, those type of hashtags. That helps a lot with images too. If you have Instagram, for example, a lot of people look for, for that, you know, but if you do, <laughs> and then the same thing on Twitter, and the same thing on Facebook, same, you know, so, so it really helps out that uh, your reach and, and really getting to people that are not directly connected to you. Any other questions? Nope. One last one? No? All right, I think we're good. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ronald, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation and for uh, answering all those questions.